Okay, so welcome to Skill Traits. Uh, today we're going to talk about what are the skill traits, so the definition um, that is out there, typical requirements, and then we're going to jump in, jump into the different trade sectors that there are. Throughout that entire time, as we look at the different trade types, we're going to go into different resources that we have or that are freely available to you, and then we'll have time at the end for questions. So what are skilled trades? Um, skilled trades are any occupation that requires a particular skill set, knowledge, or ability. It is usually a hands-on job, but skilled trades are found in every career cluster. So I want you to stop and think about what you think about when you think of skilled trades. Because I will tell you when I started the thought process behind this program, um, I come from a trades family. So my, my father and my brother both lay floors. Um, my uncle, one of them is a mason. One is a painter, one is a truck driver. So that is where my mind goes when I think of the skilled trades are those physical labor jobs that we see um, a lot of people doing. When I started doing research for this program, it opened my eyes to the different skills that are out there. So we'll talk about them more in depth, but um, food service is a type of area for skilled trades. So being a butcher or being a bartender is a skill that people acquire. Um, same in the medical sector. I didn't think of it this way, but like being a dental hygienist or um, even EMTs and paramedics are considered a skilled trade because there's a specific skill required within those. So we're going to jump into different sectors today about um, all the different types of trades out there. So that will be the entirety of this program is what different types of trades are available or out there and then um, some little requirements that are required and then we can dive into the research. So typical requirements for most trades are that you need to be at least 18 years or older. There are some that we'll look at that you could be as young as 17. Um, and I'll talk about my brother in, a, in one example. Um, and then there are some that you have to be a little bit older. So for example, to be a bartender, you have to be at least 21 um, because most restaurants require their, their bartenders to be 21 so they can serve alcohol. Um, you also need to have a photo ID, whether that is a state ID or a driver's license. Um, for any job, you will need some sort of photo identification. And then there's skilled trade education. So we'll talk about the different trades that are out there. And then the, we'll look at a few jobs that have specific trade education requirements. So the different trades. So just like I was mentioning, um, my mind first went to construction, but there are tons of different trades out there. Um, so auto mechanic, chef, uh, being a nurse, a licensed practitioner nurse, um, even doing stuff in legal, there are different trades out there that are more than just construction. So hopefully this program will open your eyes to all the different opportunities of trades out there for you. So the first one we're gonna talk about is food trades. So these are gonna be trades that are dealing with any sort of food product um, or beverage. So examples of jobs that fall under food trades are chef, a baker, a bartender, a butcher. Um, it could even be a restaurant manager. Maybe it wants to be your small business and that's your trade is a food trade. So um, these are how the slides will look throughout the rest of the presentation. We'll introduce you to the trade topic area and then we'll look at a couple of the positions a little bit closer. So for a chef, they are the bosses of the kitchen. You typically have to go to culinary arts school to get a degree. Um, and if you do go to culinary arts school, you do have to have a diploma or a GED. Um, the reason I say typically you have to go to culinary arts school and if you do go to culinary arts school is because if you decided to start your own business and you were gonna be the chef of your own business, you might just have the knowledge from being raised with other chefs or, um, training in different areas. So you might not have gone to culinary arts school, but if you decide to get a job somewhere else, so let's say um, I have a friend that works at the Missouri Athletics Club. If I wanted to be the chef there, I would need to go to culinary arts school, which then I would have to get, um, would have had to have received my diploma or GED. I'll say this multiple times throughout this session, but if you do not have a diploma or a GED, it is something you can do at the St. Louis County Library. We do have something called the Excel Online High School, and you can actually get a diploma with us. If you do not want to go the diploma route and you want a GED, we do have resources that can help you study for that test, all for free. The next is a baker. This is someone that works with doughs, batters, icings, or fillings. Uh, this is another you can attend culinary school. 
And the preference for this is a diploma or a GED. So the difference between a requirement and preference is that if you go um, to work for a local baker and you say, I wanna be a baker, they might prefer that you have a diploma or a GED. And that is because they want to show that you have some proficiency in math. So there's a lot of math involved with baking. So having that diploma or a GED just shows that employer that you are able um, to do things that I cannot do. Uh, I always have to Google, like for instance, last night, how many tablespoons are in a fourth of a cup. Um, that would be stuff that as a baker, you'd be able to do hopefully in your mind or at least you have a Google. And the last is a bartender that we're gonna look at really quick. Um, they formulate and serve alcoholic and soft beverage drinks. Um, for this, you do have to be at least 21 years old and there's no requirement. So we went from, you have to have a, G, a diploma or a GED to it would be nice if you had one to you don't have to have one. Uh, my brother bartends on the side of his flooring um, life. And so um, he is a bar manager. So he only hires people that are 21 or over, but you do not have to have any um, any background training, he will, a lot of places will do training on the job. There are places that are gonna probably be your more high-end restaurants that do require you to have some sort of training. So if you are deciding to go into the bartender realm, you'll want to check with the place that you're interested in working to see what the requirements are. So the first thing we're gonna do um, with a database is go into this resource called First Research, um, and we're gonna do industry background research. So first research is a database that provides all kinds of industry information. Um, this is free to you with the St. Louis County Library card. And I will click on this link to log in. First research is our quirky database and the fact that I clicked on the link to go into it and I have to tell it, I yes, I do wanna go into it. And then I have to tell it one final time, yes, please take me to first research. As I mentioned, this is gonna be industries. Um, across the United States. So if you're interested in working, um, let's just look at the most recent updates in the automobile rental area, you could look at what the industry looks like for that. We were just talking about food service. So that is what I'm gonna type into um, the search box. You might be asking yourself, why do I care about doing industry research? Industry research will tell you how the industry as a whole is moving, whether or not it's in a positive direction. So we're seeing more jobs in this area, we're seeing growth in this area, or are we seeing not so much movement, kind of a negative draw. For someone that's looking into a job, you can look at something called a SWOT analysis, which we'll look at when we look at food service, which shows the industry's strengths, their weaknesses, their opportunities, and their threats. And you can look at that and say, how could I apply these to the industry or the company that I'm looking to, to uh, work with? So we'll take a look at that in a second. So I typed in food service to the search, I hit enter, and then I get my search results. So I have mobile food services. You can think of this as if maybe you wanted to start um, a mobile, like a truck restaurant, a food truck restaurant, uh, food service contractors. So people that work as contractors to restaurants, um, but specifically the industry that looks like it's gonna match with me so far is this restaurants, bars, and food service. So if I click on this, I'm gonna be taken to the industry profile. And the first thing that I see that I always like to look at and my eyes always gravitate towards it, I think because it's the most colorful thing on the screen is this industry growth rating. So this industry growth rating tells me that there is a high growth within restaurants, bars and food services. So if that's a job I'm looking to go into or if that's a area maybe I'm gonna start a small business in, I can see that the growth is high. So um, right here we see the demand depends on consumer spending um, and then risks are volatile costs, which we'll talk about a little bit further. This entire page right here is a quick overview of the industry itself. So you can get little updates, you can get forecasts of where we think it's gonna go within the next few years. We see right here in this industry forecast, last year was some pretty awesome growth. Um, in the industry, we had 15.2% growth. And then it drops in growth, um, but there is still growth happening over the years. So while this chart looks like I'm taking a deep dive, I'm not going negative. So the industry isn't losing businesses. Um, so you can see all the different things you might wanna see about an industry. Opportunities, trends, challenges, and issues was something I talked about, but there's a cooler way that we can look at this and use it if we're gonna look for jobs. 
at the top, if it lets me scroll, there is something called a call prep sheet. If I click on this link, I get that SWOT analysis or those challenges, those opportunities um, in a more chunked out way than just reading it in a paragraph. So for example, um, key business challenges that I see are variable operating costs, dependence on consumer spending and impacts of COVID. So if you are thinking about starting a business and maybe you want to become a baker, you could look at these and say, um, companies in the food service industry is subject to fluctuations in numerous disparate operating costs. Um, and that's something we're seeing with just our um, like cost of eggs and butter right now. So I, as somebody that might be wanting to start a business and a maybe baking business would say, what cost control strategies are most successful? So I would wanna look into other companies to see what have they done for cost control strategies. If I'm going in for a job, let's say I want to go work for um, this really cute bakery at the end of my neighborhood called Sugar and Sliced Bakery on Main Street. And I say, I know that um, the business really depends on consumer spending. I can go into my interview and say, hey, I understand that there is some concern with um, the dependence on consumer spending. How do consumer confidence levels impact this company's business? So I can take these questions straight into an interview and have, um, have wowed my interviewees or interviewers with industry knowledge. So this is how you can use um, first research to give yourself some background knowledge on the industry itself, whether it's a viable industry that you wanna think about going into, or if you have a job interview coming up with a specific industry, you could look up what their business's um, challenges and opportunities are. Um, so you can be pre better prepared when you go into an interview. So I'm gonna X out of these tabs and go back. So the next um, area we're looking at is manufacturing trades. Um, these are gonna be trades that make products from raw materials by use of manual labor or machinery. Some examples that we have are welder, machinist, metal fabricator, line installer, a glass blower and a millwright. Um, we're not going to look at glass blower deeper, but uh, I have dabbled in the glass blowing work and it is hard. <laughs> but the jobs we are going to just take a little quicker insight into our welder, millwright, and machinist. So a welder is somebody that joins metal parts through heat infusion. You typically do need a post secondary um, certification and a diploma or a GED is preferred. So um, looking at the state of Missouri, uh, Missouri does not require specific certifications to work as a welder. Prospective welders in the state can find companies that offer apprenticeships. Apprenticeships are gonna be programs that you typically get paid while you're on the job. So when I think of skilled trades, I think of the apprenticeship programs and how you are mostly getting paid to learn the job and do on job training. Whereas um, like I had to get my degree in library science, I had to go into debt to get the training. So there is some extreme positives with apprenticeships. So during the time of an apprenticeship, welders will need to acquire a post-secondary certification from the American Welding Society. The Certified Welding Educator Program is the base requirement to work almost anywhere in the state. So while the state does not require specific certifications, um, apprenticeships and specific employers will require this American Welding Society cert certification. Welders will need certifications for each type of welding they plan to pursue. So each employer will have a specific requirement regarding the necessary qualifications for their entry level welders. A millwright is gonna be someone that installs, assembles, moves, and dismantles machinery. They have an apprenticeship program, which typically lasts three to four years. And to uh, become a millwright, you will need to have a diploma or a GED, which if you do not have, remember you can get for free with the St. Louis County Library. The minimum educational requirement is a high school diploma for a millwright or equivalent to enter into a, an apprenticeship program. In that program, you will undergo in-person classes to learn the techniques of machinery setup, preventative maintenance, repairs, replacements, and so on. You may also learn skills related to computer-aided designing and drafting, called CAD, um, technical mathematics, um, electric principles, and blueprint reading. Certain educational institutions and employers offer in industrial mechanics certifications. So if you want to go into industrial mechanics, uh, you will need to go to um, an accredited program for that. 
And then the last is the machinist. So they use machines to produce and uh, produce precise parts. Their apprenticeship um, program is from four to five years or some jobs offer on job training. And then the requirement for this is a diploma or a GED. So it can take about four to five years for machinists to become fully trained. STL Works, which is a um, resource within St. Louis that helps people find jobs in the skilled trades, says that you can start working after about 18 months of training. So after about a year and a half of training, you could start earning money um, as an apprentice. It is common for machinists to train on the job, but trade schools also offer uh, machining degrees. So like Rankin Tech or the American Trade School. The only degree typically required of machinists is a GED or high school diploma. And once you have that, you can become a machinist through apprenticeship programs, trade schools, or community college programs. While some machinists hold associate's degrees, it is not necessary or required. Um, if you are interested in becoming a machinist, and it says while some have an associate's degree, I would check with um, the employer to see if, if you have an, an associate's degree or a higher degree, if that makes you um, eligible to get a different pay, higher pay. So the database we're gonna look at right now is called Reference Solutions. This is a resource that can do a lot. Um, it is a directory for businesses, residents, people that are, have moved within the United States and consumers across the country, but it also has a job and internship aspect to it. So if you are ever interested in small business, this is a resource you would have seen or will seen. And then if um, you are looking for a job, this would be another great resource to look at. So Reference Solutions is broken out into eight different databases within. So think about this as a big database that holds other little databases. And we're gonna jump into the US Jobs and Internships um, page. So what's really cool about this is this is gonna pull jobs or internships that I might be of interest to me um, across the United States. So if you're interested and open to moving, you could leave the search very open where I don't need to select or put anything in here, but you could also put in your zip code, the state, the city where you're interested in working. So let's say we were just looking at um, welders, millwrights, and machinists. Let's look at millwrights. Uh, as I start typing, the database tries to guess what I'm wanting to say. Just a nice little helpful way. So. Um, I will go ahead and click on that. And then let's say I'm, I'm okay with working anywhere in the state of Missouri. This is gonna be a nice check to see. Um, oh, phew, there are some jobs. Um, I hadn't pre-checked this. So had there not been jobs, we would have had to have done a different search. <laughs> but uh, there are um, a number of results. So we have 10 that have been posted within this past month, which is super nice. So these are gonna be pretty free. Um, new jobs that I should be able to still apply to. Uh, we can see this one, industrial maintenance tech popped up. Well, it doesn't have Millwright in the title, it might have it in the description. Um, it was posted today. The reason I'm looking at this one today is we have a number of um, businesses that have links that I could click on. The reason I wanted to point this out is if I click on George's Inc, I can figure out more about this business their financials, how long they've been in business, who the owner is, um, which can help you with um, applying for a job. So we have Pablo is um, the manager of, I already forgot the name, George's Inc. Um, I have some little demographic information about their business. And then what's also really cool is the other jobs that are posted here. So maybe you're really excited about this place and you wanna see what other jobs are there, you can see so on their job listing. So we're gonna go back and I'm actually gonna click on the industrial maintenance tech level three. So the reference solutions is linked to indeed.com. So when you click on the job posting, it's gonna take you straight to um, the job listing. So if you have an Indeed profile, this is where you could easily go in, sign in and apply um, for this position. So think of Reference Solutions as giving you the opportunity to find jobs and internships in specific areas, and then um, giving you just that extra bit of information to research um, 
to research a business. This happened came up before. There's two different options for this business. Um, they are both in the same area. So one is probably the parent business where the other one is probably a child business of that is just how I refer to them. Um, so you get that extra bit of background information about this business just to see how they are um, within their demographics about their sale volume um, to give you a better idea of who they are so you can go better prepared into an interview. All right. The next is agriculture trades. And I'm a little embarrassed to think when I thought of trades, I did not think of this as a trade um, because my grandfather was a farmer. Um, so what I say about some of the things, um, when we, especially when we get into the farmer aspect, um, was not true for my grandpa. So it might not be true of people that are going into farming now. But a farmer or agriculture trades are, um, involves buying and selling of products that have been produced through the forestry and farming industries. They can give consumers greater access to a variety of agriculture goods, often at more affordable prices. So some examples are animal husbandry, landscaper, logger, farmer, or tree faller. And when we look at these a little bit closer, we're gonna look at farmer, logger, and animal husbandry. So a farmer is someone that um, engages in agriculture. My grandfather farmed um, corn and soybeans. Um, so that was his agriculture and what he engaged in. As a farmer, um, there isn't necessarily a required education. Um, so at the bottom, you'll see there's no preferred or required diploma or GED. And you typically want to find the area of interest that you have and get experience in that. So some farmers will hold a bachelor's degree in agriculture, but only a high school diploma is typically required. And I say typically because um, some aspiring farmers have worked on farms and were raised on farms, so they don't have that um, diploma. My grandpa did not. Uh, so some high schools offer basic courses in farming and animal husbandry and the United States of Department of Agriculture runs courses intended to help farmers learn of the trade. However, as I just mentioned, some farmers grew up on farms themselves and learned by doing the work as a child and teenager. Without, experiencing, without experience, some aspiring farmers work on other farms to gain the necessary skills. There is an optional certification offered by the American Society of Farm Managers and Rural Appraisers that show farmer, uh, shows a farmer the necessary skills to run a farm. The accredited farm manager credential involves 85 hours of coursework and passing scores on an exam. It also does require you to have a bachelor's degree. Next is loggers. They are the people that harvest and produce timber. This is typically going to be on the site training, um, something that when I did think about, like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, how could I become a logger if I'm not out there in the field doing it? And this is um, a preferred typically to have that diploma or a GED. So loggers can specialize in the following jobs and duties and work together as a team. So something we mentioned when I on the last slide was tree faller was an example. So tree fallers or tree harvesting machine operators are responsible for cutting down trees um, at, with powered saws or similar equipment. A bucker is someone who cuts larger pieces of timber into smaller logs. A logging skitter operator drags and maneuvers cut trees to a loading deck. An equipment operator is someone that loads, cuts up logs into transportation vehicles, such as a truck. And then most logging employers require candidates to have a minimum of a high school diploma in order to become a logger. Logging workers can learn all the necessary skills through on-the-job training, and some tech schools offer two-year associates programs in forest harvesting. So when I think of a logger, I think of those um, like reality TV shows that follow loggers. And when I see the tree faller, bucker, logging, and equipment operator, I can see that aspect played out beautifully on a TV show uh, where there's always high drama. Animal husbandry is someone that breeds or cares for farm animals. Depending on what you are breeding, you may need higher education and you may need a certification. And if you have to go for higher education or certification, a diploma or a GED is um, preferred. So it'll be your responsibility as an animal husbandrist uh, to choose animals for breeding that will ultimately display the traits desired by your clients. So according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, desirable traits might include sheep that produce thicker wool or cows that produce more milk. 
You may work with a wide range of animals, including chickens, goats, cattle, and other farms, but you may also decide to choose domestic animals, including cats, dogs, or birds. Um, depending on what you decide there, you may need a state license or certification to breed certain animals. So for example, dogs um, is something you would need a specific certification for on a certain breed. You can begin your career in animal husbandry without any formal education, though earning a degree may be required by some employers. You can study animal husbandry at the associate's, bachelor's, or the master's level if you're interested. And both animal science and agriculture business programs may include coursework in animal breeding, um, which some have concentrations in different fields, such as like um, cow breeding. So if you are interested in um, this field of work, I love agriculture. I always think if I was going to go into something else, it would be agriculture, uh, more than likely landscaping. Um, I have always enjoyed watching people um, plant the trees. Um, when we were getting our new administration building, I would sit and watch um, the workers planting the trees thinking, I want to be out there doing that because um, that just is something that it seems enjoyable to me. If that's of interest to you, there is something called the Occupational Outlook Handbook where you can get more information about specific jobs, especially when I click on this link on agriculture trades. So there are lots of things you can look at in the Occupational Outlook Handbook. If it's something you've not heard of before, this is where you can look at all different types of industries or different types of jobs um, to find out what you would need education-wise, what their median pay is, what the growth looks like, and so on. So when I was making this presentation, I went ahead and pulled the farming, fishing, and forestry um, page of the handbook. It's kind of weird because it's not a book, but it's the page for this specific industry. And we can see we got agriculture workers, fishing and hunting workers, forest and conservative workers, and logging workers. I get a little nice quick job summary, the typical education requirement, and then the median pay. So we're gonna click into logging workers. When I click further into a um, job group here, I'll get a lot more information, probably more than you'd ever want. Um, but you can think of this as like the one-stop place where you can go and get information about an occupation. So median pay in 2021 was about $46,000. If I click on this question mark, I have uh, in May of 2021, the median annual wage for all workers was 45. So since um, for all jobs, it was 45. Since uh, they pulled this, um, 46 is above that. So they are a little bit above the medium wage. Typical entry level education is a high school diploma, uh, which I believe I mentioned. And then something else that's interesting to see in this case, sad to see, is the job outlook. So they're on a 4% decline. Uh, so a job change that they expect between 2021 and 2031 is 1,800 people leaving the job force. Um, this could be something that I then go back into first research and look at the industry of logging to see why. What are those challenges? What are those weaknesses? What are those threats that they are experiencing um, to see if this is gonna be something I would want to pursue and see if it's going to be sustainable. Each of these links down here corresponds to a tab up here. So if I were to click on how to become a logging worker, um, it goes to that how to become one tab. Um, so you get what they do, um, the work environment that they work in, the pay, uh, the job outlook, which we saw was negative um, and state and area data. So if I wanted to look at specific states, I could in similar occupations. So these tabs can help you really explore an occupation and the possibility of others. Maybe if I said, hey, I wanna be a conservation worker, um, let me look into that. I can then go further down any rabbit hole I feel like there are also on a decline, which is sad to see. Okay, next, we might be starting to get into those jobs um, that we think of, and then we'll go back into jobs that we don't think of, uh, that I personally didn't think of when I thought of skill trades. So the next is maintenance and repair trades. These are gonna be any trades that maintain and repair machines, mechanical equipment or buildings. So 
examples of jobs here are auto mechanic, elevator mechanic, locksmith, gunsmith, aircraft mechanic, solar installer, and wind turbine technician. Uh, just because I am personally obsessed with wind turbines, that is one that I decided to look at a little bit closer. So um, auto mechanic might be something you think of when you think of uh, skilled trades. They are people that service small trucks and cars. There are different options for mechanic training and very similar with the baking. Um, there is a requirement of a diploma or a GED, and that is mostly because of math. So auto mechanics may choose to specialize in a variety of areas, including brake repairs, air conditioning, which requires knowledge of government regulations, transmissions, front end mechanics, and more. The first step to becoming an automotive mechanic begins with a diploma or a GED, as a strong knowledge base in math is essential. Some high schools do offer introductory courses on how to become an auto mechanic and emerging automotive technologies. A trade school, though, will offer even more advanced opportunities in these areas. Some repair shops will only hire mechanics who are ASE certified. To earn a certification, mechanic, mechanics must show proof of work experience in addition to earning a passing score on their respective ASE exam. Next is where mine, wind, <laughs> where mine, that's a nice combination of a word. Uh, wind turbine technicians. They are the people that install, maintain, and repair wind turbines. Um, I believe, I think his name is Micro. Um, the guy that does like the dangerous or the filthy jobs, um, he did an episode of wind turbine technician. And I will tell you, um, while I could plant trees, I could never be a technician on a wind turbine because I'm not afraid of height, but I think at that height, I would be terrified. Um, higher education is um, required or a certificate program. And of course, to go into higher education or these certificate programs, you will need a diploma or a GED. Okay, so in the state of Missouri, a license is not required to become a wind turbine tech, but certification is highly recommended. Most wind, wind turbine service technicians learn their trade by attending a tech school. They also receive on-the-job training. The U.S. Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Wind Exchange maintains a list of nearly 200 accredited technician programs and is a great place to start if this is an interest of yours. And the last one we're gonna look at is a locksmith. These are people that install, adjust and repair locks. Um, for this, you'll need either a training or an apprenticeship program. And again, there are no requirements. So most locksmiths in Missouri are self-employed individuals or they are part of a family owned business. You don't need much investment to start a locksmith business. Uh, your skill and any business address is enough to work as a locksmith. One can even start working from home or a mobile van equipped with locksmith tools. So you can have a wide variety of options as a locksmith. In Missouri, the locksmith trade is not regulated at all. You don't need any license in Missouri to work as a locksmith. You can learn how to make keys or install locks and you are good to get employed with any company in Missouri. Or you can start your own business. So this one's gonna be a little different, the database we go into. So before all the other databases or resources I went into were wide. You can go into them for a wide variety of reasons. The one I have listed here is all data, and it is specifically for cars, so for auto mechanic interest. So all data is a resource that we have that you can only use within the library. They do not have a remote option. Um, they did have a remote option for a tiny bit during COVID so that people could access this from home. Um, but in our case, uh, people were across accessing this from across the entire world. So that got shut down real quick on us. Um, so this is something that's only accessible in any of our 20 branches. Uh, we currently only have 19 open, but once the Clark Family Branch reopens, um, you'll have 20 places you can go to get this. And this is gonna be information on foreign and domestic cars and trucks. And it's gonna be all of that like repair information. Ooh, I was a little nervous. Um, I'm on a laptop, so I was afraid it wasn't gonna let me in. But it did. So when you log into all data at any of the library locations, you'll be taken to the um, repair of the community screen. If you click on repair, this is where you can start searching a car. If you click on community, this is where you can ask questions and look at other questions people have asked. Ooh, go away. Um, so we're gonna search, um, I didn't think of the first car I had, but I don't think I can remember it, but I did have, 
a 2013 Prius C. So I can search um, for a car and I get the different options. There was four different types of Prius Cs when I purchased my car. And I can also do a search by searching a year, a make and a model of the car. So let's just click into any car. Um, this is really great for consumers as well. If you have something wrong with your car and you feel like you can do it, you're a do-it-yourselfer, you can go into a library, look up your car and get diagrams of your car, um, diagnostic trouble codes. You can see what parts and labor you need. Um, I've helped patrons when we were during COVID and we did not have the road access um, with information on how to change their um, backup camera, how to change the, um, I don't know what it's called, but, and you can't see what I'm doing, but like when you go to start your car, you put the key in and you turn it. Um, I've helped someone with a diagram and then the parts and labor that would be needed for that. Um, so anything you might need for repairing a car is going to be in this resource. Um, so as you can see, it has all the different systems and components um, that you would be able to to uh, fix. I think I used this when uh, this exact car, uh, my light, uh, one of my front lights went out and I am very newbie to any do-it-yourself car. So this was able to assist me with um, changing one of my front, front lights. So a uh, really useful resource for consumers, but a really useful resource if you decide to go into being an auto mechanic. Um, I believe a lot of like big companies, like auto mechanics, like I'm thinking of dealers that might have this. Um, from what I understand, a lot of big companies will pay for this for their employees to have. So this is something that you also have in addition at the St. Louis County Library. Okay, medical trades. I will pause and say here, this is where I was not thinking. When I was thinking skilled trades, I thought your auto mechanic while I didn't think agriculture, if someone was like, I'm a logger in my head, it would have come to my mind. That's an amazing skill trade. Um, I thought construction, because that's what my family came from. And I wasn't thinking medical trades. So when I was starting this program and researching it, and I was like, types of trade jobs, uh, these came up too. So I wanted to highlight them. So medical trades are workers um, that help clients maintain or improve their well being. So a licensed practical nurse, EMT, dental hygienist, paramedic, massage therapist, respiratory therapist, and lab technicians all have to go to specific programs um, to learn this trade. I think the biggest difference with a lot of the other jobs that we've looked at and this job, um, and when we think about any of the jobs that did require you to get an associate's or a bachelor's, um, require you to, I don't wanna say go into debt, uh, but go into debt or pay for the education. Whereas when I think of construction and um, we've been working with somebody that um, helps showcase skilled trade positions to high school students, you're typically getting paid while learning. So just a little bit of difference um, there. So the ones we're gonna look at is dental hygienist, paramedic, and then respiratory therapist. So a dental hygienist. Uh, they are people that help with preventative oral health care. Um, for this position, you will need to have a, um, you will have to have completed a program that is accredited by the Commission on Dental Accreditation, and you do have to have an associate's degree to be a dental hygienist. So all states require dental hygienists to be licensed through the specific, though these specific requirements vary. That said, the minimum level of education you need to earn your license in any state is an associate's degree. Depending on your career goals, you might choose to pursue a bachelor's or a master's. No matter which degree you choose, becoming a licensed dental hygienist requires attending a program that's been approved by the Commission of Dental Accreditation. Accredited Dental hygiene programs have demonstrated that they meet the highest quality standards for education and therefore help ensure future patient safety. In order to become a dental hygienist in Missouri, you must obtain licensure through the Missouri Dental Board. The process includes education in an accredited program and the satisfactory passing of national, regional, and state exams. So if this is an interest of you, you could search Commission on Dental Accreditation Programs and see what uh, programs are out there that are close to us. For a paramedic, there are people that specialize in emergency treatment. 
this is a position you do need higher education and an externship in. And to even begin going into paramedic school, you will have to have EMT training. So before you can become a paramedic, you must be a certified emergency medical technician. You must undertake the EMTB, which is EMT basic training and testing. Um, as the name implies, the EMTB is the most basic level of training. Certified EMTs must pass the National Registry Emergency Medical Technician Cognitive Exam. Um, so you have to be certified as an EMTB, you have to take a cognitive exam. And then typically EMTs must have at least six months experience to qualify for paramedic training. But like other prerequisites, the requirement for time spent on the job does vary by state. Some states require up to two years experience to be eligible for training. So becoming a paramedic requires completing a one to two year program accredited by the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs or a paramedic program or one that complies with the National Emergency Medical Services Education Standard. Unlike a lot of the other jobs we talked about, um, there is required continued education for being a, a paramedic, which is about 144 hours a year. And then the last job I wanted to highlight is respiratory therapist. The reason I wanted to highlight them is I have asthma, so I've had to go to a respiratory therapist. And sometimes I thought this could be interesting, helping people improve their lung health. So evaluation and treatment of lungs and airways is what they do. You must have a sort of, um, you have to go through a program that is accredited by the Commission on the Accreditation of Respiratory Care. It's a lot of words. And you do have to have higher education for this. So that Commission of Accreditation of Respiratory Care has approved 12 programs in the state of Missouri. So if you are interested in becoming a respiratory therapist, you could look up that commission. Uh, while you're obtaining your education, this is a little bit different. Um, you can obtain and apply an educational permit so you can work as a resp respiratory therapist while you are training. After you finish your education, you need to take at least one of the National Board of Respiratory Care um, cert exams. And then once you have graduated from your therapy program, you can get several different types of licenses. So this one is a little bit different. Um, typically, you do have to do higher education, but all of these jobs are a trade in and of themselves. So the database we're going to look at is called Learning Express Library. This is a resource that I say everybody could find something of help within Learning Express Library. So whether or not you are going into a trade, you can find assistance. If you're going to higher education, going into college, you can get assistance um, with SAT, ACT, or GRE tests. Um, there's immigration assistance in there. There's courses to help with like tech stuff. There's cover letter and resume assistance. There's even finding jobs. So this is a database that literally has something for everybody. So as I mentioned, there's something for everyone. So the, there are different blocks that people can go into. Um, for some reason, I think this is maybe the oddest thing is they have career prep, job and career accelerator and resume and cover letter builders um, not next to each other. And then if you clicked on like job and career help accelerator, there's this business and job letters and the same thing here. So there's a little double dipping um, that I've noticed is just a little eccentric. But we're going to look at career prep. And the reason I wanted to look at career prep is a lot of those health positions we just looked at, you can get assistance here. So for example, um, we talked about becoming an EMT. I can prepare for the EMT certification all for free within this resource. Um, by taking some practice exams, looking at their prep books and looking at prep flashcards. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, construction trades at the end, um, but there's electrician and plumbing exams in here as well. Um, for nursing, if you're gonna become a licensed practical nurse, uh, we have the NCLEX exams. Um, if you wanna be a real estate agent, we have those as well. So this is a resource that can help you prepare for any of those um, exams or certifications, not any, um, but I would say most, um, that can help with most of those exams that you might need for um, a trade that requires certification, especially those that are in the, the health field. Um, 
if I click on home, I do want to show the job and career accelerator really quick. Um, you can explore occupations, you can find a career match. So if you're like, I, at the end of this, you're like, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Megan presented a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things I'm interested in. Um, you can use the career match to find your interest or to take skills that you have and show you jobs that are going to highlight uh, the skills that you have. Um, I would sign in and <laughs> to my account so you could take a further look, but I would just embarrass myself for the next five minutes trying to figure out what my password is. So we're going to skip that part. All right, service trades. We are getting close to the end. Um, so these are going to be trades or careers that have a specialized skill. So these trades require a short period of training or an, or an apprentice program. So we can think of these jobs as like a 911 operator, dog trainer, flight attendant, florist, jeweler, exterminator, mortician, watch repair, hairstylist, um, pretty much any service that has specific training required of it. Um, I could not be a dog trainer. I just couldn't go out and do it. Uh, I would have to get training in it. So 911 operator are those wonderful people that answer our 911 calls. Um, this is a job that you would want to consider a college degree in. And if you do, you would want to go for a diploma or a GED. In order to become a public safety dispatcher in St. Louis, you must have graduated from high school or obtained a GED. If you wish to significantly increase your competitive advantage and preparedness for this position, you should consider obtaining a college degree from any of the St. Louis um, institutions. After you're given the conditional job offer, you will be required to pass a physical conducted by a physician and a psychological exam conducted by a psychologist. A mortician is anybody that preserves bodies and plans funerals. So um, this is a, a job that you will need in, to go to mortuary college, which is typically only one or two years, or have um, an apprenticeship. And for both of those, you will need a diploma or a GED. In Missouri, the mortician career field is regulated by the Missouri State Board of Embalmers and Funeral Directors. This agency requires that aspiring morticians complete high school plus one year of mortuary college, as well as one year of apprenticeship experience. Once a mortician is licensed in the state, there are no continuing education requirements, which is pretty nice. And the last that I wanted to highlight is flight attendant. These are those wonderful people that are in charge of the cabin in an aircraft. To be able to do this, you do have to have an FAA issue certification. And for that, you do have to have a diploma or GED. So to become a flight attendant, you need a minimum of a high school diploma or GED. Though not required, a bachelor's degree can increase your employability. The most relevant degrees are those in marketing, hospitality, tourism, public relations, or communication. Many airlines require a minimum of two years of experience in hospitality, customer service, or sales. Airlines that look for Airlines look for work experience that proves that you can spend long hours on your feet, working overtime, handling problems, and providing outstanding customer service all at the same time. Airlines do provide a three to six week training program depending on that airline for their flight attendants. So this was one that I didn't have a database for because services are all over the place. So, so far we've looked at first research. So if you're saying, ooh, I wanna be a mortician, you could look into the industry of funerals um, funeral business or just mortician. If you're wanting to be a flight attendant, you can go into Reference Solutions and look up um, in that job and career database, flight attendant positions, and same with 911 operator. You could also go to Occupational Hand Outlook Handbook for any of these um, to look at average, uh, median pay, and then uh, job requirements. So transportation trades, I'm going to have to hurry through these next ones, um, are those that cover vehicles ranging from automobiles, motorcycles, airplanes, and cranes. So examples of these are air traffic controller, a bus driver, an asphalt paver, a helicopter pilot, sailor, taxi driver, truck driver, and a train conductor. So looking at these just really quickly, I pulled asphalt paver, truck driver, and train conductor. So the asphalt paver, um, the qualifications for a paving operator include a high school diploma and the ability to operate a paver or other equipment. You may need a commercial driver's license to operate equipment or transport equipment on site. For a truck driver, this is another job that I thought of when I thought of uh, trades. This is something one of my uncles does. 
Um, you transport goods and materials over land. You typically need a CDL license with class A being the most versatile for driving. Um, and with this, you have to be at least 18 years or older. And then train conductor is the last one we're gonna just take a dive into. Um, this is someone that oversees the train and train crew. Um, typically you have to go through a company sponsored training program, which does require a GED. So the minimum requirement to become a train conductor is a high school, school diploma. Many large railroads provide on the job training for new conductors. And this training may take up to one year to complete depending on that employer. Smaller railroads may offer similar training through a community college or training facility. So when we talked about asphalt paver and we talk about truck driver, a CDL is required or for asphalt paver, it was nice to have. Um, it might be required for other equipment you would be driving. We have a resource called drivingtest.org, which has um, for the most part, most um, licenses that you would get in Missouri. Uh, so if you have anybody that's 16 or turning 16, then we have car tests. If you're wanting to live on the wild side and ride a motorcycle, we have motorcycle tests. Um, but for that CDL test, uh, we have the handbook that you could get at any DMV or download from the Missouri Department of Revenue or yeah, Revenue's um, government website. And then there are all of these tests that you could take. This is all free and it allows you practice before you go and take that actual test to obtain a CDL. I wanna keep scrolling uh, because this was something I did not know was under here. Um, we've had people ask about school bus testing and not knowing what's required of it. We've either said use this resource or we don't have anything, but we do have school bus um, tests as well as passenger uh, vehicles. And I think there was even one on limousines, uh, which might fall under the, the passenger vehicle. So this is something that's free to you where you could take these tests um, to make sure that when you go to take the official licensing test, you are as prepared as you possibly could be. And then in the last few minutes, we're gonna to get to the where I started, where I wanted, when I thought of this program, this is what I was thinking of offering, this construction trades. Uh, these are gonna be workers that help build office buildings, homes, schools, roads, bridges, factories, and other structures and help with stuff within them as well. So carpenter, electrician, plumber, HVAC, electrical, painter, and a mason are examples of these careers. Um, so like I mentioned, this is where I wanted to start. So I do have programs coming up in the future that will be more focused on these specifically. So HVAC technician um, is something that in St. Louis is considered part of being a sheet metal worker. Um, they're in the St. Louis area for an apprenticeship or for training. It is 8,000 to 10,000 hours on the job or in the classroom training and a diploma or a GED is required. The information that I'm grabbing from this slide specifically pertains to a booklet that I got from a colleague that works um, promoting the trades in St. Louis. And um, so if this is an interest of you, feel free to reach out to me after this presentation as it has the contact information for the unions within the area. Um, a mason is someone that it works with brick, block, stone, um, glass block and more. The apprenticeship program is about three and a half years. And at the beginning of the presentation, I said a typical requirement is to be at least 18. This is one that you could be 17 for. And there is a requirement of a D diploma or a GED. And the same with an electrician, which is someone that um, is in a field that's ever evolving since electrical needs are advancing. This does um, involve a five-year course. So in the last few minutes, I'm gonna jump into skill mill and then I see that I have a question. So I'll try to jump into that. Um, oh no. Cool, it did let me click. So the reason I thought of this program and the reason I was gonna start with construction is we recently just acquired this resource called skill mill. And this all involves training courses online for HVAC, solar, plumbing, electrical, and more. Um, you are able to, get on-demand training in all these areas through videos, knowledge assessments, and then um, simulations. 
So if this is an interest of you and you want to use this resource, uh, we have a page where you would click um, read more about it that you would register for it. But I am hopefully going to be able to show you um, what this looks like. I say hopefully as I did a training on this on a laptop not too long ago and um, I it was not letting me log in from the laptop I was on. So we will hope for the best today. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Yay, okay, we got in. So you, you can uncross your fingers. So this is um, what it would look like as somebody that has an account. This is the dashboard where you're able to see the courses that you're currently taking. But this is the catalog of opportunities you could look at. So if you say, hey, I'm really interested in learning about plumbing, you could look at what courses plumbing has available and then uh, learn more about plumbing through these courses. So if you are new into plumbing, you can start with plumbing fundamentals. If you're like, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good into plumbing, I'm going through an apprenticeship program right now, you could jump to the water heater professional. Ooh, thank you. And um, that was just telling me this path was getting ready to be retired. Um, so they're gonna make it into something new. So I could see what courses are within each of these, uh, what how long each course might take, how many videos there are, and then in this one, there's simulations. So the advantage of this database is while you are sitting and learning, you can also quote unquote, hands-on learn. If you're interested in enrolling in class, you would click on enroll and then start. And then I am just gonna work to find a simulation really quick. Uh, so we can look at what a simulation more looks like. All right, Maybell, Minnie May, um, you asked, do you talk all the fields? Um, we can assist people in any fields, um, like with finding a job or learning more about that job. Um, this was just an overview of all the trades that are out there. I wanted to get your question answered while this thing loads because it does take a couple of minutes, um, but it's an extremely cool resource. Okay, let me click start. So when I'm in a simulation um, on the computer, I can click and drag to look around at the house that I'm currently in. Um, we also have, we have currently at the branches, they should have arrived um, today our headsets for virtual reality headsets that you could immerse yourself into this. So that's the cool component of Skill Mill is that you could be in virtual reality. Um, the steps I have to go through are always gonna be at the top. So it says select an option, select the system of failure on the water heater. I am in an advanced setting. So it's asking me what, um, what is going on. So I can say it is one of these issues. There was no hot water. Um, next, it's asking me to remove the cover plate and uh, access the thermostat. Um, so I would go through each of these steps to, um, uh, <laughs> to uh, do what it's asking. So it, it's telling me I just about shocked myself as a person um, that was doing this through um, other means. What is the name of the resources? Uh, the name of the resources that we went over are first research, um, reference solutions. This one is called Skill Mill um, Occupational Outlook Handbook, um, and I will be sending you the slides at the end of this presentation. So this is just a quick look at Skill Mill. Um, future presentations that I will be having, and maybe this answers that question you were asking, uh, will cover more of the construction trades. And then in a couple of months, I'm specifically covering HVAC and plumbing. So since I'm running out of time, what is next? Um, if there's anything that was of interest, if here you can research jobs by reviewing areas of interest and looking at specific job openings. You can use a number of our library resources to walk through uh, requirements and the job search, as well as how to go through the application. And then the biggest thing that's helpful is if you're interested in a job in this area is networking. So meet with industrial industry professionals to talk through a day in their life. In the summer, we're going to be offering a human library for trades, where it'll be people from different trades, um, where you can talk to them about a day in their life, what the requirements are, 
um, what training programs they went through, who they work for, and so on. So if you need any library assistance, you can email us at reference at slcl.org. We have something called Book a Librarian Service where you're able to sit one-on-one -on -one to talk about these resources. So if you said, I really like that industry research database, first research, we could sit and talk about all the ins and outs of that resource. If you said, I'm really interested in exploring how to become a painter, you could put that in the form, which I'll show you in a second. And then we could talk through all the different resources that we have that it can assist you. Um, so since we are almost out of time, we are out of time, but you guys can stay as long as you want. Um, if I hover over using the library under personalized learning is that book a librarian form where you can input your name and address and uh, your preferred type of meeting. And then the topic is where you'll say, I'm interested in learning about this. Um, so if you said, I really need to know more about um, starting a small business as a baker, that is something we could talk about. Or I need help finding a job in this, in the medical sector or becoming a dental hygienist. Uh, we would be able to sit with you one-on-one -on -one for at, up to an hour. Um, and then we can do additional sessions where we could help you with our resources. Ah, future programs. So um, maybe I'll ask what future programs do we have? So future programs that I personally have, um, let's see, this is February. So in March, I have a program that is looking at the trades forecast of jobs in St. Louis. So it would be using that occupational outlook handbook and first research to look at the industries to say, how are, what does the job market look like? And then either April or May, I am doing a specific program on Skill Mill, that last resource we just looked at, um, this, this really cool resource, where I will um, talk specifically about HVAC and plumbing. Um, other programs that we have, we have some one-off ones that are like Job Hunting 101, or um, the trainers offer resume building classes or cover letter classes. Um, mine will all be on Zoom. Um, some of the upcoming ones we are typically going to be in um, person, but these are better on Zoom because I can record them and then I can send them out because there is a wealth of information within them. Okay, so that brings me to the end here. Um, if there are any questions, I can stick around and ask an answer or any questions that you might have about the resources that we do have. Um, and then, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, for anybody that, I think there was only one participant when I started, now I have a dis quite a few more people. Um, I will be sending the slides out to everybody since you had to register for this program. I do have your email, so I, and you got the Zoom link, so I for sure have your email. Um, I will send you the slides as well as the links to this recording so that you can uh, review at your leisure and be able to get uh, the links to the databases that we went into today. Um, can you write down your answer? So for the, how come we have more in person than Zoom? Um, the reason our staff, we allow the staff to choose whether something's gonna be in person or over Zoom. Um, so most of the staff prefer to be in the branch helping the community at the community level. Uh, we are having our staff do programs in person or via Zoom so we can have the uh, recording option. So that's something we're really pushing for this year is to have more um, Zoom programs of anything that we offer in person. Okay, any other questions? We did talk about auto mechanic. Um, let me look at the layout that I had of this. We talked about auto mechanic about um, probably 10 minutes or 15 minutes in. So we did talk, I did cover that briefly and talked about a resource that we have called All Data that helps with mechanics.
and I'll go back and I'll put the reference email back up. So if you have questions, um, you can jot down that email. Now, I went a little bit over on time. Uh, so why did I talk about mechanics, electricians, and personal hygienists or dental hygienists? Um, so this program was just an overview of all the different skilled trades that are out there. So when I looked up skilled trades, we think of stuff that is auto mechanic or electrician or um, construction, but um, it, the definition of trades was that um, it's anything that requires a specific skill. So we just looked at the different types of areas that are out there in the skilled trades and then, um, and then uh, different jobs within those specific areas. Okay, I'm coming up uh, six minutes after 11, so I will have to head out. Um, if you do have future questions, you can email this reference at slcl.org. And then um, if you need to, you can do that book a librarian service as well. And we can help you with any of those needs with our resources. Thank you for coming. I will send you those slides as well as the recording. So then you'll also have my personal email for work as well. Have a good one.